Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna fabric clobber some electrical pixies into yonder pelche element. En français, des éléments pelletiers. On va faire une étude de, de cette uh, patente. This is a pelche element. It's named after a 18th century, 17th, no, 18th century physicist Jean Pelletier. Essentially, the pelche and the Seebeck effect are sides of the same coin. The Pelche effect is if you have two dissimilar metals and you send electrons through it, one metal is going to heat up and one metal is going to cool down. Conversely to that or obversely, the same as uh, electricity is the same as magnetism, just the other side. Okay. Converse to that is the Seebeck effect, wherein if you have two dissimilar metals and you heat them up, uh, differentially, you get a voltage across them. And that is kind of, well, it's the same effect that they use in order to get thermocouples to work. The quick and dirty of it is the model that we like to use, JFM, which just fucking magic, it just works, is you get two dissimilar metals, you start heating and cooling them, weird shit happens. We're gonna look at what weird shit happens and how we can use that weird shit to our own advantage. The real world problem that I have is I'm gonna be away from the power grid for about 10 days doing some prospecting and canoeing and messing around and I need my drill, my 12 volt drill. I don't have any way to charge it. So how are we going to charge this? A picture is worth a thousand words and a Vigeo is worth a million, except in our case when I actually pack a million words into each Vigeo. I must show you what this, this is a thermoelectric cooler module. So this is actually a Pelche element. And when you say Pelche, what you're looking at is differential heating and cooling. When you say Seebeck, what you're looking at is you're trying to get uh, electricity out of the leads essentially. So it's actually a Seebeck generator. And this is not the right module for this. These are only about four or 5% efficient at the best of times. And because we're gonna be driving this in reverse, because this is a cooling module, if this was a G, then it would be a generating module and we would know that it's actually a Seebeck generator. So here we go, red and black, we're gonna make her chooch and see what happens. Okay, we got it powered up, 20 volts. Uh, it's only drawing three milliamps and something fucked with it unfortunately doa is heating up both sides okay so we got <laughs> this one's fucked that's what's going on here nobody panic oh just this thing that's what happens you buy from the cheapest available source sometimes you don't get what you pay for and this you know what are you gonna do send it back to uh, big rock candy mountain ain't happening so potluck let's try another one now we're whopping the pixies, and as we can see, one's got the hot side, and one's got the cold side. So these two are working. And that's all that's happening is we're jamming electrons in there, and it has a cooling effect. That is the Pelche effect. We're going to do the obverse of that. We're going to do the Seebeck effect. And i got to thank a young viewer for this idea, because he, he didn't come up with the idea. He asked me what was going on with these BioLite stoves, which is a, a rocket stove. It uses biofuel, you know, leaves and twigs and so forth, in order to, for camping, in order to heat your food. At the same time, it'll charge your phone, you know, so you can update your Facebook profile while you're on the Grand Tetons and so forth. The thing is, that thing is like 200 fucking doll hairs. It's, it's pretty pricey. So the kid asked, is there any way to take that technology from that stove and make it into a charger yourself. And yes, absolutely there is. I just gotta prove that it works, is all. Now, when we're proof of concepting, we're not even at the prototyping stage. We want to eliminate wasted time. So we get the le we want the most effect for the least effort. And this is going to be that. What we have is a big aluminum embodiment here and Further to that, a big copper plate, which is just sort of in the waste bin. That's gonna go on top on the cool side. This is gonna be the hot side. And we'll have a load here of just some LEDs. We'll see if 
we can get the LEDs to light up. Reiterating, these Peltier, or rather Peltier generators are extremely, well, if there's anything I can't cotton to, it's mispronouncing the, the American language. It's, these are actually Seebeck generators and they're extremely inefficient, especially considering I'm using a cooler and not a generator and so forth. But the beauty of it is when you have fire, you're already like open flame. You are, you're not worried about efficiency whatsoever. So what we're going to do is we are going to differentially heat this bottom platen, which is aluminum, doesn't matter, it could be copper, could be steel, whatever. And we're going to try and cool this copper or maintain a certain temperature of this copper platen on the cool side. We're gonna see if we get enough chooch to chotch these LEDs. Baseline, we see here in the shop, 24 degrees science, zero volts across the junction. Now, how are we gonna cool this top platen? Uh, this is like a lost, long lost technique. It's incredible. The guys are using flow cooling and all sorts of stuff like ice and so forth. Evaporative cooling, it was used on engines for a hundred years. What we do is we put a liquid on here and we allow it to evaporate. And that evaporative cooling, that's how your skin, that, when you sweat, that's how you're cooling. It, it works in the nature, so we're gonna put it to work here for us in the Empire of Dirt. Contact. Okay, we got a problem here. This hasn't changed at all, so poor connection. We have a temperature differential. Yeah, there we go. Temperature differential of 20 degrees, 15 degrees. We should be seeing something. There we go. Okay. Loose wing nut on the steering wheel. Cordict. Okay, we're at 0.7 volts and we're at 20 degrees in the difference. Now, the forward voltage of these uh, light emitting diodes is probably one and a half volts, so we won't see anything until one and a half volts. Okay, we saw it just came on. 1.7 volts is the forward voltage of this guy. Surprisingly, this is working better than I thought. Of course, more delta, more better. We're gonna bring this up to 150 in the differential. She's, yeah, 120 milliamps at uh, 0.8 volts. So, well, that's odd. That shouldn't be running anything. Let's see here, maybe something going on there. Let's see, yeah. Okay, let's zero that. Some drift some drift in my instrumentation I knew it was too good to be true in any case we're gonna get this going again see if we can't melt our fillings and see how much power we get out of her. cold junction temperature hot junction temperature and voltage across the two remember these two elements the pelche elements are in parallel so we'll get twice the amperage but the same voltage 1.7 should be turning on. Here we go. 1.7. Fully on. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Broke my top. Oop. Broke my tile. Two elements down. Okay, so. There we go. Can't get her much above 200. Otherwise, the solder melts right out of her. You don't know until you know, and now you know. Now prior to this, who who could have predicted this would happen? What my plan was, was to hook this up to a little boost converter. So this would take three volts in and then 12 volts out, as long as we had enough power. And then we could, bal not balance charge, just float charge these on the go. However, right now what we gotta do is we're gonna order the proper TEG, that's the generator, thermoelectric generator module, and then we won't bring her up as high. And we'll see if we can get that in a future video to charge batteries off of a campfire. Thanks for watching. Your dick and advice.